Hello and welcome to another episode of Historically Marked. I am in St. John's Cemetery, which is kind of near the Madison and St. Clair County line, but it's one of the biggest um, cemeteries in Collinsville, Illinois, which um, lies in the central southern portion of Madison County. Now, Collinsville has had a rich history all around its Italian population, the horse rash capital of the world, large ketchup bottle, but yet there was a lot of um, controversial and tragedy that happened here in Collinsville. And this is no exception. Now this is actually a two-part episode. Um, the second part I will be um, talking about, or rather showing you a video of the ceremony that happened last year, the dedication ceremony that happened in June of last year, 2020. It is now May, 2021, and I meant to post this um, earlier, you know, but now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give you a little bit more on what happened with Robert Prager and who he was and everything. And here is the historical marker that was dedicated. And of course, like I said, I was here for the dedication ceremony. The mayor of Collinsville was here, as well as historians and people that wanted to be here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and of course show you the marker and I will give you a little background on Prager and what really happened here in Collinsville. All right, check it out. When I was at the ceremony last year, um, I did talk to the historian that spoke there, and it is believed that the lynching actually occurred be across the street, you know, before all those houses were there. And so it's kind of hard telling what it was like, um, you know, what, I mean, sorry, as what Collinsville looked like back in the day, over a hundred years ago during World War I. But the cemetery has been around for a long time. There are many internments here. Um, Robert Prager is not interred here. He is interred at St. Matthew's Cemetery in Collinsville. So who was Robert Prager? He was born in Dresden, Germany, and um, he later, of course, became a German-American immigrant. But in 1905, he moved to the United States at the age of 17. Now, he didn't start out here in Collinsville, but he did work his way towards here. Um, along the way, he was sentenced for, to jail for theft and he went to an Indiana reformatory for that. And then he moved around in Missouri and Illinois. And he did show a lot of um, patriotism for his new country. And by the time w President Woodrow Wilson declared his war speech on April of 1917, he immediately enlisted in the draft. After he was rejected by the United States Navy for medical reasons, he um, later took up residence here in Collinsville and worked as a baker. But he was mostly interested in joining the coal mining union because he knew there was a lot of livable wages. Now at the time, half of Collinsville's population was miners. I know it's kind of hard to believe now, but yes, there was a lot of um, coal mining going on in southern Illinois. And yes, there was a lot of, um, you know, issues like uh, wage strikes and riots and whatnot. And here is the ugly part. Yes, there was a lot of anti-German activity going on because obviously, again, we were at war with Germany. So Robert Prager was no exception. He did, again, like I said, he showed a lot of patriotism for America. He desperately tried to fit in. I mean, I know it's kind of worded odd that way. So I'll go ahead and show you the marker, which really tells you all about it. On April 5th, 1918, German immigrant Robert Prager was hanged by a mob at this site. Prager's lynching was the high water mark of the anti-immigrant and anti-German hysteria that gripped the nation during World War I. Prosecution in the guise of patriotism was especially severe in the southern Illinois coal fields. Eleven men accused of the murder were promptly acquitted. For generations, there was remorse in Collinsville over the town's failure to stop the mob and the lynching. One witness later said, nowhere appeared a sober, clear-headed man to say no and make it stick. And so came violence, death, tragedy, and shame. On April 3rd, 1918, two days before the hanging, um, Prager applied to the United uh, Mine Workers Local 1802 Union and was rejected. After the union meeting that evening, miners paraded Prager near saloons in Maryville, then warned him to leave. He would later write a complaint letter that night um, expressing his disgust to the, pres to the president of that union, James Fornero. And on the afternoon of April 4th, he posted copies of this letter near the Maryville mine and in nearby saloons. That, of course, enraged all the locals, and by that time, they had ganged up on Prager, 
and the mob assembled on Main Street and several hundred men marched behind a U.S. flag singing the Star Spangled Banner. And I mean, there's there's lots of other details I could go into, but either way, yes, I mean, it was definitely ugly times. And I mean, it, even though a lot of people would rather forget this, I mean, it is important as it was said at the dedication ceremony that, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of um, the past cannot, um, I mean, it can't be repeated, but it also cannot be forgotten either, so. Right before Prager became executed, he wrote one last letter to his parents in Dresden. Dear parents, I must on this, the fourth day of April 1918, die. Please pray for me, my dear parents. And now I'm going to go ahead and take you back almost a year before at the dedication ceremony. Here we go. shadow we are going to remember it by this memorial that we're placing here. I would like to thank the committee, uh, all those who have donated and especially Pete who comes to this historical gathering very very well because of his mother Lucille. Alright, so 11 and a half more months later, I revisit this site and where, of course, the marker was dedicated. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off. And this is pretty much here to remind um, Collinsville locals and many other historians um, what happened here and whether it was good or bad. Of course, this was bad, you know, but, um, but thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason, signing off. <laughs>